Hey there, welcome to Walnut Hill Online. I'm Crystal Ellington, the online campus pastor, and it really is a pleasure to be worshiping with you today. Walnut Hill Online is a place where we all can gather together to worship Jesus no matter who you are or where you are on your journey with Jesus. We would love for you to lean in with us as we sing, as we pray, as we give, and as we learn from the Word of God. I really want to encourage you to connect into our community today. You can do that in a few ways. First, if you're new, I'm so glad that you're here. Could you visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card? It gives me a chance to greet you, to meet you, and to send you a small welcome gift and a personalized email just welcoming you to our Walnut Hill Online family. We also have prayer here for our community. If you visit walnuthillcc.online.church and select request prayer, you'll be taken to the place where you can access our prayer servant who would love to pray with and for whatever concerns you might actually have today. We would love to pray for you. This is what we do as the family of God. And don't forget your kids. They're part of our community today as well. Visit walnuthillonline.org slash kids and you'll be taken to the place where we have age-appropriate Christ-centered curricula just for your kids so they can grow in faith today just as you will as we go through service today. We are continuing in our sermon series called Good Question. We have Pastor Brian preaching to us a message called Why Suffering? We're going to investigate why there's suffering in the world. So if you have a friend or you know someone, a family member, a neighbor, a coworker, go ahead and share this message today so that they can really be blessed by the words of encouragement and understanding that Pastor Brian is going to share with us. So before we head into our worship today, I want to make sure that you're going to clear out that space so you are distraction free. You have an opportunity to really press in and worship Jesus today. So let me encourage you from Psalm chapter 30 verses 11 and 12. And the Bible says, you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You've taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. Oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. So we come together to worship our God because he clothes us with his joy. He gives us fullness of joy in his presence. And we worship God because we are grateful people. So let's pray right now and prepare our hearts for this moment of worship we have together. Lord, we come here today to gather to worship you with our whole hearts. You are great and you are good and you love us. And because of all those things, you are worthy of our worship. Lord, exchange whatever pain, whatever sorrow, whatever anxiety, whatever we've got going on with your joy as we sit in your presence, as we worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, welcome again to Walnut Hill Online. Let's worship together. Let's stand to our feet together. We're going to lift our voices and praise Him today. Let's sing out these words of praise be the weapon. Praise be the 
Come on, sing out these words. I can't hold back my praise. Sing it to the heart of God today. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. today. Well, good morning. My name is Becca Mowry, and I'm our worship director. And I've been gone for a couple weeks, and uh, I had the privilege of tuning in online. And do you know what happened when I tuned in online? You know, it's so easy to tune in online and watch. And it's so easy to come to church and watch. But when I opened my mouth and sang, it changed things. Can anybody testify today that when we speak the truth of God, when we bless the Lord, oh my soul, hope wells within us. God begins to change us and God begins to shape us and God begins to draw near and we experience him in a new way. So today, as we continue to worship, as we continue to lift our hands and lift our voices and celebrate him, sing out. We are singing to a God who is worthy of praise in glory and honor. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's because fear cannot survive when we praise of the living God. The Bible tells us that he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Yes. When we stand on the rock of Jesus yes. Christ. Let's sing that out together this morning. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I know When brokenness and pain is all I know Oh, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken
words so deeply right now in this place. You 
you are good all the time. You are good. And we are loved by you all the time, in every moment, in every circumstance. We are your treasure, and you are ours. Shout Jesus from the mountains, Jesus in the street. 
Hallelujah. Jesus rules and reigns in this place. Jesus, come and have your way in every heart and mind and in every situation. Jesus, we put you as King of kings and Lord of lords. And we say, come and have your way in this place. And God's people together all said, amen. You know, there is such power in that bridge. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. We want this broken world to know the power that there is in Jesus, amen? Amen. And one of the ways that we do that is by giving of our words, giving of our time, and giving of our resources. And as a church, we come together and we say, we want Jesus' name proclaimed above everything else, above all situations, and over all things. And so as we continue on in our worship service, I just invite you to reflect on those words. Jesus, how are you calling me to shout out your name? How are you calling me to declare your goodness? How are you calling me to bring you to a broken world? Through my giving, through my time, and through my practical finances, Lord, how do we empower your kingdom here on earth that heaven may come and invade this earth and bring the light and the hope that we know is found in Jesus. So let's continue to bless the Lord. Let's continue to give to him of all that we are, our focus, our time, our attention, our voices, and all of the resources that he has given us. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, it's good to be together, church. You may grab your seats. despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. He was pierced for our trans... What are you doing? Reading my comic. Okay, which one? My Bible, but I got all kinds of questions. All right, let's check it out. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. What's that mean? Are you familiar? Am I familiar with pain? Good question. This too. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. He was pierced for our transgressions. What are transgressions? Good question. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. Healed from what? Am I sick? Are you sick? I think it's time to pull out your real Bible. Let's see. How do you know which Bible is the real Bible? Good question. Good question. I'm not going to answer all those questions today, um, but I am going to try to uh, answer the question that is most frequently asked when it comes to God and faith. Before that, let me say hello. My name's Brian, I'm one of the lead pastors, and I just wanna send my greetings to those of you in our campuses in Waterbury, New Milford, and Derby, and to all of you online, welcome. To those of you here in our Bethel campus, uh, good morning to you as well. It's been great to tune in online over the past three weekends. Be Beck and I have been away. I went to Minnesota to spend some time with uh, her side of the family, which was a lot of fun, but we're, we're eager to come back to be with you. We tuned in. I just wanted to say thank you to Adam and Carrie for sharing about three weeks ago. Thank you to Pastor Crystal and Pastor Greg who shared. We have a fantastic preaching team here at this church, and I just was ministered to by them. I'm so grateful and thankful for them. So today, we're in this series called Good Question, and you know, several years ago, the Barna Group, who's a research-based uh, group and organization, did a study asking people, if you could ask God one question, knowing that you would get the answer, what would that question be? And the question was, the top question was, why is there pain and suffering in the world? Is that a question you've ever asked? Certainly a question I've asked many times, to be honest with you. In 2017, I did a study of our kids' ministry, all kids in our elementary school uh, here at the Bethel campus, and I, I asked them and gave them a survey to 
determine what are the questions that they're asking. The top question that they were wondering and curious about when it comes to faith in God was, if God is good, then why is there suffering in the world? That's not just a question that elementary school kids have, is it? It's a question that we, we all carry, I think we all battle with, and we're all trying to find understanding on. I, I wanna try to give a little bit of wisdom into this question. What's the Christian's perspective when it comes to evil in the world and a good God? Why is there suffering? Why suffering? I can tell you as a pastor, this is a personal question that I've asked many times. Uh, I've sat and walked with people who have gone through some of the deepest struggles you could possibly imagine. I've sat in the rooms and walked with people. I've had the undesired privilege of being able to walk with some of you in the room right now. I've seen pain and suffering. Uh, on a personal note, I, I ask this question probably in the purest and truest sense on my way to Austin, Texas, when I was getting ready to officiate the funeral of my godson when he passed away at only about nine months old. Why? Why? How on earth can this be right? And we all have these pains and sufferings, don't we? Whether it's a health journey or a loss of a loved one, we all have these, so why? Why suffering? I wanna take us on a journey here, and what I wanna do today is try to give you a framework to place this question into. But I also know that there are many of you who are listening to this, who are sitting here now, who are currently in a season of suffering. And I wanna share some words pastorally uh, to you in this moment. And if you're not in that season, I want you to listen to these words because we know that in this world there are trials and there are troubles and that we will go through seasons of suffering. Let me read our scripture verses for today. I'm actually choosing two. I'm gonna share a lot of different scriptures. This is gonna be a journey. This might be a message where you decide to pull out your phone and write these passages down so that you can return to them later in this week, write them down, or go back online and watch this video again so that you can dive in deeper and glean as much as you can from this study. A couple passages to start with. John chapter 16, verse 33, it says this. This is Jesus. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Second passage, Revelation chapter 21, verse four. He will, I love it. Whenever it's speaking about God and it says he's gonna do something, count on it. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All things, all these things will be gone forever. Do you catch the kind of two things that are being spoken about here? You, do you see the present and future aspect of these passages? You can see that present aspect of, of these, these passages that, hey, right now, while you are on earth, right now in this present age, in this present time, there's going to be trials, there's going to be suffering, there's going to be sorrows, but also you can be of good cheer, Christ followers, even in these seasons of suffering and trial, because you know that there's a future hope. So right now on this earth, know that trials are going to be a part of life, but have hope knowing what's going to come. There's a future aspect to these passages as well. He will wipe every tear away. This is what we have to look forward to. There will be no more death or sorrow or pain. What a, what a wonderful promise for us to hold on to. But back to the question, if God is good, why is there suffering in the world? Let's go on a journey here. Let's start here. God is good. And God is powerful. As Christ followers, we do not want to give up on those two things. We do not want to pad those two things or water down those two things. God is good. Nahum chapter one verse seven says this, the Lord is good, 
a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who take refuge in him. Not only is he just good, but he knows us, and we can know him. He is good. I love in Psalm 34, King David says this, O taste and see that the Lord is good. I like that because what what David is saying is, listen, if you just come into the presence of God, if you just come and encounter Jesus, if you just come and experience him, what you're going to experience, what you're going to taste is his goodness. He is good. For those of you who are or have traveled through seasons of great suffering and you've walked with the Lord, I bet your testimony sounds a little bit like this. It was hard. I had a lot of questions. But as I walked with the Lord, I experienced his goodness. He is good. He is the God who delivered his people. He's the God who came down as one of us. He's the God who went to the cross and died for our sins. He's the God who walks with us each and every day. He's good. And we experience his goodness. We don't just read about it. When you have a personal relationship with the Lord, you experience his, his goodness. He provides for us. He speaks to us. He gives us the gift of his spirit, which is the presence of God. He gives us a peace that passes all understanding. Our experience with God is that he is good. And not only is he good, he's powerful. He's powerful. You know, I've been asking the Lord recently for an awakening to the power of God. That actually he would reveal to me more and more progressively how powerful he truly is. And that that would develop and build my faith. He is powerful. In the Bible, it clearly testifies to the fact that God is powerful. He's called Almighty 58 times. In Psalm 147, verse 5, it says, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. In Jeremiah 32, verse 17, it says, O sovereign Lord, you made the heavens and earth by your strong hand and your powerful arm. And I love this. Nothing is too hard for you. God is all-powerful. Nothing's too difficult for him. He made all that there is. He sustains it all by his power. He's good. He's powerful. We should also probably throw in there that he's (laughs) all-wise and he's all-knowing. A lot of times when the problem of evil is talked about, Some folks like to leave those things out. Well, if he's all good and he's all powerful, why is there suffering in the world? Well, actually, that's not, that doesn't describe our God completely. Yes, he's all good, he's he's all powerful, he's also all wise and all knowing. This is who God is. So, how can there be good? How can there be evil in the world if God is good? If God is all powerful, if he can do something about it, why? Doesn't he? Why suffering? Let me try to share some reasons. And this is going to be a progression for us that I want you to travel with me that will give you a framework to place suffering into. You know, we have to ask ourselves several different questions. You know, what's the reasons for allowing suffering? If God is all good and all powerful, there must be a reason for him to allow this to happen. Why would God allow evil to exist in the world? What could he possibly value more than the absence of evil? And what's the Christian response to that? Let me share three things that become a framework for us as we, we look at this. The first thing I want to share with you is this. God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. I love that we don't serve a God that just kind of, you know, is out there. We have a God who walks with us, who's made himself known to us. Our God desires a relationship with you. You know, underlying most people's questions about suffering is an assumption about God's purpose in creating us. When we talk about this question of suffering, we have to understand why God created us in the first place. There are a couple different options. You could say, well, God created us so that we could have a a happy 
and comfortable life. Well, if you put your, your, your thinking through that paradigm and you look at our world and you say, well, God is not doing a good job. He's not accomplishing his purpose for creating us. What if I were to suggest that his purpose was entirely different? That actually God's purpose for creating human beings was to bring them into the knowledge of who he is to bring them into a personal relationship with him. Now, these are two very different responses. Coming to know and love God is much different from him keeping us comfortable and happy. But what God does is he frees us so that we can be in relationship with him. This is his heartbeat, this is his desire. He wants you to know him and he wants to be known by you. He frees us into relationship. This is the first part of the framework. God wants a relationship with you. This leads to the second thing. If God wants a relationship with us, if this is his priority, if this is the reason he, he, he made us was to be in relationship with us, well, then this comes the second part. An authentic relationship with God requires freedom. In fact, without freedom, it's not an authentic relationship. It's not real. God, he values relationships above all else, but for this relationship with him to be meaningful, for it to be real, for it to be authentic, it must be freely chosen. You know, I, I'm, I'm beginning to like more and more, as, as the father of four daughters, this idea of arranged marriages. <laughs> uh, more and more, I'm liking this, this idea. I feel like, I'm, I'm better equipped to choose somebody for them. <laughs> I'm, I'm liking this more and more. I'll just arrange it for you. The problem with that is, would it really be love? Would it really be a relationship at all if, if somebody else just made them have it? I don't think so. I've told you this analogy in the past. You know, I could make my kids hug me. I could take their little arms and I could just put them around me and, and say, ah, you're hugging me now but it would mean nothing. It would mean nothing. You know when it means something? is when they come home from Hume Camp on Saturday and I walk in the door and they run over and they hug me. I missed you, Papa. I love you. Now that means something. Why? Because they chose to do it because they chose to, to show their love, to, to, to show me that our relationship was real. This is the kind of relationship God wants to have with you, a real one, one where you closely walk with him. And so God must have cost, counted the cost of allowing freedom in this world in order to achieve his purpose of being in relationship with the ones that he's created. He must have counted the cost and said, oh, I know by, by allowing this free will for them to, to choose, I know that this could go badly. I know the things that will enter this world, but, but my, my chief purpose here is that my people would know me and that I'd be known by them, that I'd walk with them in, in great purpose, that I'd walk with them in great intimacy. But I know the cost because I know that my people will choose some things that will cause division and separation from me. And isn't that true? And isn't this why we oftentimes experience suffering? It's because of this free will that we've been given, we can use it for good things and we can use it for bad. Our free will can be used to, to choose some things that harm other people. Maybe you've been the victim of those decisions. But we can also use our free will to, to bring great glory to the Lord, to honor one another. And so there's this beauty in free will. I believe God must have counted the cost and said, man, my, my heart is so much for them to be in relationship with me that I'm gonna allow their free will to go. You know, suffering comes from a fallen world. This free will used in a negative way. Choosing to, to walk away from the Lord as early as the Garden of Eden. And we do this throughout our lives as well where we choose to, to step into our fallen nature, where we, 
walk away from the Lord. This is where suffering comes from a fallen world and suffering comes from the forces of evil that are in this world. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. But God, he wants us to be in relationship with you. But secondly, in order to have an authentic relationship with him, it requires freedom. Third thing I want to share with you that, that gives you this framework of why suffering. The third thing is this. Our relationship with God is a partnership. We can't forget that. Our relationship with God is a partnership. Do you know, in the book of John, it clearly states what Jesus' purpose was for coming to earth. Very clearly. In 1 John chapter 3, 8, it says this, The Son of God, that's Jesus, appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to destroy the works of the evil one. Well, what are the works of the evil one? We know that too. In John 10, 10, it says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And isn't that what the evil one is still doing today? He's out there stealing. Stealing people's identities. Stealing people's confidence. Stealing people's joy. Stealing people's peace. This is what the evil one is still doing today. He steals, he kills, and he destroys. We also know about the work of Jesus. In verse 11 of that chapter, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. It goes on, it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Friends, this is our purpose in Christ Jesus as well. Our relationship is a partnership. That means that in our relationship with Jesus, we are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. That means that we are to go out as light in darkness, that we're to be the salt of the earth, that actually we have been dropped into a spiritual battle. We can't forget it. We can't forget it. That right now in this age, we are in a spiritual battle. This is why the Apostle Paul in Ephesians says, put on the armor of God. He would not suggest that if there wasn't a battle already going on. Put on the armor of God. Becca and I are, are so proud of my brother-in-law, Becca's brother, uh, Colonel Ben Owen. He's a colonel in the United States Army. He's been deployed, I think it's six, maybe seven times. I have to imagine, and I know this is true, is that when Ben is, is deployed, he's never surprised when he's dropped into a situation, when he arrives in his location, he's never surprised that there's an enemy looking for him. Never. He goes knowing, I'm being dropped in to a war zone. I want to welcome you to the war zone. I, I wish I had better news for you. But we are in a spiritual battle. And the evil one's tactics is to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, I don't want you to become fearful in this moment <laughs> because we're on the winning side. Because we know the one who has power over the evil one. This is not a moment for fear to settle in. This is simply a... a a William Wallace moment. <laughs> if I had a horse, I actually do have a horse. If I had my horse here, I'd be riding on it right now back and forth. <laughs> do not forget that you are in a spiritual battle. That the evil one is at work. Put on the armor of God each and every day. Go to work bringing light into this dark world. Let me give you some good news. And let me give you some bad news. Let me start with the good news. The good news is this, is that this season of trouble, pain, and suffering will one day seem like a blink of the eye. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 says, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Man, we know that Christ is victorious that every tear is gonna be wiped away, 
Now, here's the bad news. I don't know when he's returning. I could try to put some equations together and write a book about it. A lot of people have tried. To date, no one has succeeded. <laughs> and Jesus has told us, you're not going to know the hour or time. And so what our role is, is, is to be the light of Jesus Christ until he returns. You know, I think that our God is, is quite amazing because our God can take our suffering and use it for good. Have you experienced that? Have you experienced that? God can, can take our, our, our suffering. He's kind of, I used to watch that show MacGyver. Anybody else watch that show MacGyver? A couple of you, I'm, I'm sharing my age right now, I think. And, but MacGyver would take anything that he found and use it perfectly for his situation. Uh, this is our God. He can take our, our suffering and he can use it for good. Do you know that, that suffering equips us to comfort others? I've seen it so many times. We, we've studied this passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 where it says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. And isn't it amazing that when you're going through something, when somebody else comes alongside you who has gone through something similar, how much comfort that brings you. The Lord uses our struggles and our trials to bless others. The Lord can take suffering and make good out of it. Do you know that suffering positions us to experience God? So often I, I hear from folks saying, man, this, this season was so difficult, but I had never experienced the presence of God like I, I did in that season. David wrote in Psalm 34, the Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. I love that. Do you know that a season of suffering can fast track transformation? I love in, in Romans chapter five, it says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Wow, that's, that's a mature thing to say, right? We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. These seasons of suffering, although we're not wishing them upon ourselves, when we're in them, so often what the Lord can do is he can fast track our transformation. And seasons of suffering, they deepen our faith. They give us roots that reach really deep so that when another storm comes, we're stronger for it. I wanna give a word to those of you who find yourself in a season of suffering right now. And if you're not in a season like that, maybe just hold on to these words. Maybe they'll be a blessing to you at another time. Just a few words. God cares about suffering big and small. This is important for us to know. Sometimes I think I hear people saying, well, you know what, God can't be bothered by, by my suffering. There are people who are suffering far greater than I am. You know what, that's always gonna be the truth. <laughs> that somebody else is probably suffering more than you. But the myth in that statement is that God doesn't care about your suffering. He cares about suffering big and small. It was Jesus who went to Lazarus' tomb who was dead and raised him to life. That was big. It was also Jesus who performed his first miracle by turning water into wine. I'm pretty sure they would have made it the night without the wine. He cares about our suffering, big and small. Welcome him in to your season. I said this already, but I want to say it again. God has a plan to end suffering. Remember, we have a picture of heaven in Revelation chapter 21. It says this, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. That actually our best days, friends, are ahead of us. Our best days are ahead. I remember I was watching a football game with one of my friends. It was my favorite team, and we were watching. It was the playoffs. And for some reason, he had to record the game because I couldn't watch it live. And so we're sitting there, and we're watching the game. I learned later that he had watched the game already. 
Okay, so he's watching it. Now I'm knowing, okay, now I know you've watched it already, but now we're watching it together. Okay, we get that. Our team goes down, and, and they're losing quite badly. I keep looking over at my friend, though, and he doesn't look uncomfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. I'm thinking they're going to be knocked out of the playoffs. I keep looking over at my friend. He's, he looks surprisingly peaceful in this moment. And I'm wondering to myself, why is he so peaceful about our team getting destroyed in this moment? Later, I, I found out he's so peaceful because he knew the end. Our team came back and won. I think it was against Atlanta. Anyway, <laughs> I've lost some of you now. I've lost. Come back. Come back. Why was he so peaceful? Why was he so confident? Why did he have so much hope? Because he knew the end. I, I want to tell you, friends, you know the end. You, you know the end. You know the victory that's coming. Be of good cheer. Take hope in the fact <laughs> that you know the promises of God. We know something that others don't. So shouldn't we in every season be those beacons of hope? Next thing I wanna say to those of you who are in a season of suffering right now is this, is that God, he sees you, and not only that, he understands your pain. I love that about the Christian faith, (laughs) is that we have a God that not only sees us, but he understands our pain. Do you know, as you read through scripture, you you see that our God, he saw Hannah weeping for a child. He saw the blind man on the side of the street. Jesus saw the woman who was bleeding. Jesus saw the father whose daughter was dying. He saw the, the men with leprosy. He saw the widow who had now lost her son. He saw the criminal on the cross. Our Jesus, he sees you and he cares for you. Right now, he sees the pain and the suffering that you're going through. And not only that, he understands. Our Jesus was spit on. He was falsely accused. He experienced the greatest of pain. And so this might just be a a good moment for you just to reflect and remember that you have a Savior who not only sees you, but understands. One more thing. I want to encourage you in this season of suffering to cast your cares on him. I love in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says this, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. When my daughter was about five years old, we'd come to church, and after church, she always wanted to carry my bag, and she'd carry Becca's guitar, and she'd, she'd try to do this, and she'd be carrying my bag and the guitar, and she'd be hitting it against walls and people and all kinds of things. And I'd say, Reese, Reese, let me carry that. No, 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 I got it, I got it. She's tripping over it. People are being injured in the fellowship hall, right? It's like, just give me, just give me that. I can carry it. You know, friends, you have a heavenly father who's walking alongside you right now. He sees your pain and your suffering, and it's too great a weight for you to carry on your own. And he's asking you would, you, would you give it to me? Would you allow me to carry that with you? Would you allow me to walk with you? Let me just answer one last question, and then we're gonna worship together. What do we do in a season of suffering? What do we do? I remember I got my motorcycle's license, and I remember taking a three-day class, and we would go and learn how to, how to ride motorcycles. And the instructor on, on the first day taught us how to turn. And you'd think you just kind of turn the wheel. Actually, the best way to turn a motorcycle is to lean and look in the direction that you want to go. It's very hard to turn left, wait, left if you're looking right. I should have done it the other way, I'm righty. It's hard to turn left and look right. It's very easy to turn left and look left. In fact, the bike will go where you look. I want to encourage you, if you're in a season of suffering, to look in the direction that you want to go. Look in the direction you want to go. Look to Jesus. I want to encourage you to draw near to him, not away from him. Walk with him. Look to prayer. Look to worship. Look to gratitude. Look to godly friendships. It's going to be through the presence of God and God's people that you're going to find comfort in this season. 
Friends, I hope that I've given you a bit of a framework. I know I haven't answered every question, but I pray that this framework has given you some understanding into why there's suffering in this world. I pray that this message has given you hope that our Jesus will be victorious. And I pray that for those of you in a season right now of suffering, that maybe this message has given you some tools to know how uh, to receive the comfort of Jesus Christ. And I pray all of this in the powerful name of Jesus himself. Amen, amen, amen. Friends, I wanna encourage you, would you stand with me? As the worship team comes. You know, at the end of our services, we love the opportunity to pray with people, and we're, we're gonna do that again today. In just a moment, I'll invite our prayer servants up. But I wondered in this moment, you know, if you were bold enough, I wondered, just by a raise of hands, because I'd love to, to pray for you, I wonder how many of you right now are in a season of suffering? How many of you right now are, are facing a great trial, a great trouble? If, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand. Yeah, it's many of you, many of you. And so friends, you know, let's take a look around. We are the community of God, right? We are the church. And so um, if you saw somebody who put their hand up, you know, just extend your hand to them. You don't have to lay your hands on them, but just because we don't know what people's comfort levels are on that, but just extend a hand towards them as I pray. Let's pray a blessing over our people. Let's pray that the God who is good and who is all-powerful would come and do a healing work. Let's pray that the Lord would give them encouragement uh, that they would be refilled in this moment to keep going on the journey. And so, Lord, we, we, um, we saw many hands go up. I would imagine this, this represents um, what's happening in our world, too. Many people are suffering and hurting and going through trials and troubles, broken relationships, a need for physical healing. Maybe it's just an inner turmoil. Maybe it's an addiction Maybe it's a suffering through depression. And so, Lord, right now, for whatever reason, those hands were raised. Lord, we pray that you, the God of all comfort, would come and comfort your people. And, Lord, I, I pray, because you teach us to pray in this way, Lord, I pray that you would heal my friends. Lord, I pray that you would bring healing into their life. I pray that you would heal bodies, that you would heal minds, that you would heal identities. Lord, come, we, we call upon you. And Lord, I pray that you would walk with your people closely today, that they would know your peace, that they would know your encouragement and your comfort. Lord, I pray that your words would break through into their hearts, that even the battles they, they go through in their, in their own minds and, and thoughts and maybe other things people have said, Lord, I pray that your voice would break through. So Lord, come, come and bring comfort to your people. Lord, our hearts long for your return. But Lord, right now we commit and promise that until you do return, we will live in this battle as your light, reflecting your son, Jesus Christ, to this world. Give us strength, give us your gifts, that we might storm the gates of hell and call heaven down. Pray all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing together, friends. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone.
Thanks so much for joining us for worship today. Pastor Brian's message may have unearthed some things that you're going through, some trials, some struggles, some pain, some things that really, you know, you're wondering why you're experiencing them. And I really want to encourage you today to, to really do what Pastor Brian said. Instead of running from the Lord, these are the moments where you need to lean in to seek his presence and to seek his face because he can give you all the comfort that you need. And I want, also want to help you with that. We have prayer servants who would love to pray with and for whatever suffering or pain or trial or anxiety that you have in your heart today. Visit walnuthillcc.online.church and select request prayer to access our prayer servant who would love to pray with and for you. This is what we do as a family of God. Give us the pleasure, give us the privilege of praying for you today. I also want to continue to encourage you to connect, connect, connect into Christian community. Visit walnuthillonline.org and select connect so that you can find a group that we might have open and available for you right now. You can also create your own group of three to five people, what we like to call the crew, where you can share a meal, read your Bible, read a book together, pray, really just do Christian life together. You can also join my Facebook group called Walnut Hill Online. It's an opportunity for me to encourage you throughout the week and for me to connect with you and for me to remind you of the things that we learned on Sunday so that we can really be walking out our faith every day as Christ followers. If you're new to our community today, please don't go out the back door. Please don't log out today without letting us know who you are. Visit walnuthillonline.org slash new and fill out that connect card so we can connect with you, so we can greet you and send you a smile welcome gift, really just welcoming you to the family here at Walnut Hill Online. We would so love to know who you are and to connect with you and to know actually how we can serve you, how we can help you, and how we can pray for you. Please give us that pleasure of connecting with you today. So as you go into your week, let me bless you and let me pray for you. I pray that as you go into this week, if you face any kinds of trial, any kinds of hardship, any kinds of pain, that you would run into the arms of Jesus. And as you run into his arms, I pray that you would experience that unending love that he has for us and that you would experience his comfort that he would so long to give to you as you seek him and as you pursue his presence. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, God bless you. I love you so much. I'll see you real soon.